have you ever found a rock like this containing lots of little bits and pieces of shell? Actually, those shells are fossils. What are fossils? Well, any sort of evidence that there have been living things around in this region in the past. And there are lots of different kinds of fossils. How are they formed? Let's imagine we go back millions of years and we look under the ocean and we see an ichthyosaur swimming around. Now, if the ichthyosaur dies and falls to the ocean floor, the soft parts of the body may decay away, leaving the skeleton. And that may become covered with mud. The mud, in turn, may change into rock. And so you have preserved, for perhaps millions of years, a fossil. The remains of that ichthyosaur. That's one kind of fossil. Now, you don't always find the actual hard parts of the living thing. For example, sometimes you'll find a piece of rock and when you break it open, you might find there the space which was once occupied by something living. There we are. There's a space which was once occupied by a shell. The shell is no longer there, but you can see the shape of the shell because of that hollow space in the rock. That's called a mould. Now, moulds can be explained perhaps better with a little piece of plasticine. Let's imagine that's some rock at the bottom of the ocean floor. And here's the remains of a living thing, shellfish, which falls to the ocean floor and sinks into the mud. There we are, press that into the plasticine. Then it's covered up with other layers of sediment, which eventually turn into rock. Press down the second layer of plasticine. There we are. And millions of years later, that whole layer of rock may be worn away and we see the shape of the original thing. Now, in the meantime, the original living thing, in this case the shellfish, may have been completely decomposed and you may be left with just the hollow space. That's called a mould. Nothing there, but you can certainly see the shape of the shell. Now, sometimes, as the original material dissolves or decays away, it's replaced bit by bit by rock. This is called a petrified fossil. And occasionally you'll find huge trees that have become petrified or turned into rock. Here's a tree trunk in the petrified forest in the United States of America. Very impressive fossil indeed. Now the formation of this kind of fossil is a little bit like making your own chocolates. What am I talking about? Well, maybe you've seen these. They're actually moulds for your own chocolate. There we are. They're a little bit like those hollow spaces in rock that we talked about. And they may have patterns in them. These happen to have patterns of shells and leaves. How do you make your own fossils out of these? Well, you start with some material, not rocky material, but something far more pleasant, chocolate. You can use an ordinary block of chocolate if you like, milk chocolate or dark chocolate. You can use special cooking chocolate if you like, works a little bit better. Or you can use these little cooking chocolate pieces. Now you take some of those and you put them in a heat proof glass bowl. There we are. And you stand that in a fry pan full of water and you heat the whole thing gently. You can do it over the stove in a saucepan of water, but it's much safer and easier to do it in a fry pan as I'm doing here. That whole thing has been sitting there for about 10 or 15 minutes and you can see that we have nice molten chocolate. Now all we need to do is to simulate, to do what happens to the rock under the ground, to the fossil. We take some of that molten chocolate and bring it over to our mould and let it drip into this one here, which has the shape of the shell. Let it come almost up to the top. And we can do the same thing to the next one, which has the shape of a leaf. And you can allow that to sit there for about half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour, uh, in which time it will solidify. Or if you're impatient, you can pop it in the refrigerator. And before very long, you'll have something like this. There we are, your very own fossils. and. You can gently remove them. There we are. There's a leaf and there's a shell. And you have fossils that are not only interesting to look at, but also delicious to eat. Curiosity. If you're planning to make edible chocolate fossils, it's not absolutely necessary to use plastic moulds from the shop. You can use seashells collected from the beach. But if you're going to use seashells, there are two things to remember about them. One, you should wash them out very, very thoroughly with detergent and hot water and then rinse them in hot water several times. 
and second you should smear the inside of each shell that you're going to use with butter or margarine and then everything else is the same get some molten chocolate in a spoon and carefully fill each shell and then place the shell in a cool place so that the chocolate solidifies and before very long you'll be ready to tap out that edible fossil which will be in the exact shape of the shell you chose.